What's up everyone, my name is Evan Morden and today I'm gonna tell you about a little mistake I made and why I'm getting rid of my very first vintage camera lens. I was at the Pasadena Camera Show and I brought a couple lenses with me looking to find something different that I can experiment with. I came across a 1950s Canon 135mm rangefinder lens. It looked like it was in good condition, it had the leather case, the little viewfinder on top, and I was able to find someone there with an adapter for about $5. I brought it back, threw it on my camera, excited to test this lens that was over 60 years old, over twice my age. And I found out pretty quickly I couldn't get infinity focus and I couldn't really focus on anything in the distance. So it made it where that lens wasn't very useful for me. And that's due to the flange distance. If you don't know what flange distance is, it's the distance between the sensor and the rear element of the lens. Right now we're shooting on a Canon EF mount body and the flange distance for EF lenses is 44 millimeters. So if you want to use vintage lenses on a Canon EF mount body, you're going to want something longer than 44 millimeters. The reason why is if you're adding flange distance, an adapter is going to be a lot easier to achieve that and get the full focal length without losing any stops of light. Now, if you are trying to use something such as a Canon FD or vintage Minolta lenses, there are ways to use it, but it comes at a cost. For example, I have this adapter for vintage Minolta lenses and it has a glass element in it because the flange distance is shorter than 44 millimeters for Minolta lenses. It's 43 and a half millimeters. So this is gonna let me achieve that infinity focus, but at a cost. And by at a cost, I don't mean how much it costs. It's only about $25. I'm talking about a 1.4 crop factor and losing about a stop of light. Also having that glass element in between can cause issues with lens flares and other sorts of technical issues and essentially make that lens not as good as it was intended to be. But if you have a mirrorless camera, you're only gonna be adding flange distance because a mirrorless camera, you're looking at about an 18 millimeter or 20 millimeter flange distance and any vintage lens is gonna have a further flange distance than that. So if you're using a mirrorless camera and it's full frame, you're gonna be able to get the full focal length and not lose any stops of light with those adapters. Now, if you do have a Canon EF mount camera body and you wanna use vintage lenses, I would recommend using Zeiss Contax lenses or Leica R lenses or Pentax K lenses because those have a longer flange distance. Hopefully you were able to learn a little bit about flange distance as well as vintage lenses from this video. I'm gonna be putting in the description a lot more details on different specs with camera bodies and lenses. So you can look at that to help you research vintage lenses that might work for you in your photography and videography. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'm gonna be posting a lot more videos. See you on the next one.